Hello, this is Lonnie with Rolling O Farm. Today I'm doing a little upgrading to my electric fence system, and I thought it may be a good opportunity to talk to you about some of the pros and the cons of using electric fencing with livestock, and also to talk about the three essential elements to having an effective electric fence. Come along. So I'm a fan of electric fencing. Probably 70 to 75% of my farm is in electric. And here are some of the reasons why. Number one, cost. Generally speaking, electric fencing is going to be much more cost efficient. Now there's different options when it comes to electric fencing. And so each option is going to have a different price point. But if you were just to take this five strand electrified high tensile fence that I have here, you're looking at probably a third of the cost as opposed to going with permanent field fence or net wire. And the reason being less material. It requires fewer posts. Posts are expensive. It requires less labor because it's easier to install. Labor is expensive. And also the wiring itself, just price per foot, is going to be cheaper. And even if you were to go with some of your more expensive options when it comes to electric fencing, such as portable electric netting, because it requires less material, because you're able to pick it up and move it wherever you need it, it's usually cheaper. Rather than having to fence in a whole 40 acre block, you can take the portable electric fencing and move it in sections in that 40 acres, so it requires less material. Generally speaking, electric fencing is much more economical. That's its number one pro. So another pro of electric fencing is its effectiveness. Electric fencing is more of a psychological barrier rather than a physical barrier. And what I mean by that is an animal potentially could go through an electric fence. It's just that if it's properly hooked up to a good charger, they really, really, really don't want to. Probably most of us have a childhood memory of one of our friends daring us to go touch that wire over there. A good hot fence makes a lasting impression. One experience with it, and we want to stay at least 10 feet away from it. Most livestock are the same way. Once trained to an electric fence, they keep their distance, they respect it, even if the fence is off for short periods of time. I also believe that electric fencing is probably more effective when it comes to predator control. You know, if a dog or a coyote comes up to a field fence, a net wire fence, that's a physical barrier. But they're usually not afraid to dig underneath it. If they come up and touch an electric fence, they're not going to stick around to think about digging underneath it or going through it. They're going to stay away from it. Most of my fencing is in electric. I don't currently have livestock guardian animals with my goats and sheep, and I almost have no predator issues whatsoever. And I think part of that is because of the effectiveness of the electric fence when it comes to that. So pro number two, it's very effective. So another major advantage of electric fencing is its versatility. And I'm really talking about the ability to move a fence, to put up a fence or to take down a fence. With goats and sheep, it's really important that you do some type of rotational grazing. In other words, you move the animals around your pasture so that they're not continuously eating and staying in the same area. This will cut down on the number of parasites that they have. It'll also cut down on disease problems. But it's difficult to do that with permanent fencing. And the reason being is, number one, the cost. If you're going to cross fence a lot of your property with permanent fencing, you're going to have a, a major expense in that. Second of all is it's very inconvenient. It's a hassle to have to go through all of those gates. And if you're wanting to clip your pasture or you're wanting to spread fertilizer, you're having to go through all of those gaps, make tighter turns in all of those paddocks. A better solution is to have temporary fencing. 
Now, there may be some type of effective non-electrified temporary fencing option. I'm not aware of any, but I know there are several highly effective electrified options. You have electric netting that you can put up and take down. You have electric rope like we have here, electric ribbon. There are several options that allow you to be able to set up a temporary fence in any area that you want to, however large or however small, and to take that down and move it to another area. Electric gives you those options. Even if you don't have uh, power run to your property, you can use solar fence chargers, you can use battery powered fence chargers, along with temporary fencing, you have a lot of versatility with electric fencing. As with anything, there are some cons to electric fencing. In some ways, electric fencing can be a little higher maintenance. One of the things that you do have to watch out for is vegetation growing up and making contact with the bottom of the fence, therefore shorting out or grounding out the fence. So it may be necessary during the growing season to spray underneath your fences with some type of herbicide to keep the grass from growing like Roundup or something of that nature. You can also mow underneath your fences or weed eat underneath your fences and that will keep weeds from grounding out your fence. It's also important to have a powerful enough fence charger that even when some weeds do contact the fence that it doesn't drain all the power out of it and short it out right away. So one of the cons to electric fencing is you do have to keep the fence clear of anything that would short it out. So with an electric fence, there's always the possibility of your fence being knocked out by a power outage. If you have a plug-in unit and the power is out to the unit, then obviously there's no power in your fence. If you have a battery-powered charger or a solar-powered energizer, then you wouldn't necessarily be affected by that. It is possible for an electric fence effectiveness to be reduced in times of severe drought or deep snow because the ground is not conducting as well and therefore you can't complete the cycle of the uh, electric shock as well. It is possible that lightning can run in through the fence or through your power system and knock out your charger. That risk can be reduced by installing a lightning diverter or a lightning arrester. But all of these are factors that to consider on concerning an electric fence as opposed to a non-electrified fence. So because electric fencing is more of a psychological barrier than a physical barrier, it is possible for animals that are not familiar with electric fencing to go through the electric fencing before they realize what it is. I did have a neighbor's dog who one time got into my pasture and I'm assuming what happened is it came up, was not familiar with electric fencing, tried to pass through the electric fencing, probably got shocked halfway through, jumped the rest of the way into my pasture but certainly wasn't going to go back near the electric fence to cross through it to go back home. So for three days, it was stuck in my pasture before I discovered it. So electric fencing does allow the possibility of an animal going through it if they're not familiar with it. So let's finish up by talking about three key components that are necessary to making your electric fence work well. So the first key element to having an effective electric fence is the fence itself. Whatever type of electric fencing you have, it needs to be well insulated. If there's anything touching that fence that can conduct a current back to the ground, then it's going to create a short and the fence won't work as it's supposed to. So if any of the wiring of the fence is touching the ground or touching a metal post or touching a tree, then it's going to short out that fence. You also need to check and make sure that all of your insulators that they're all intact, that they don't have any cracks in them, that they're not broken, that there's nothing that would allow that wire to, to conduct a current back to that post. Also, you need to check for tree limbs and trees that may have fallen on the fence. Any of those things can short out your fence so that it doesn't work. Now, there are some fence energizers or chargers that monitor your fence and can indicate when there's a problem. But even if you don't have that feature, you can take a fence tester and test your fence to see if there's a short somewhere in it. First key element to an effective electric fence, a well insulated fence. 
So the second essential element to having an effective electric fence is having a good ground system. Electric fencing works by a current traveling from the fence through the animal to the ground. When you hook up your electric fence charger, you'll notice that one side of it's connected to the electric fence, the other side is connected to your ground system. The animal, when it touches the electric fence while standing on the ground, the current travels through the animal going back to the ground. That's what creates the shock in the animal. If you don't have an effective grounding system, that current can't effectively travel through the animal. So no matter how powerful of a charger you may have, it's still not going to work like it's supposed to work. A lot of electric fence problems stem from an inadequate ground system. Now, since I'm upgrading to a more powerful charger, I also want to add a few more ground rods in my grounding system. So the third essential element of having an effective electric fence system is having a good fence energizer or fence charger. In many ways, your fence energizer is the heart of your electric fence system. And so you want to have one that's powerful enough to make a lasting impression on the animal when they touch that electric fence. And you also want one that's reliable enough so that you can depend upon it and know your fences are operating the way that they're supposed to be operating. Now, many fence chargers are advertised by the number of miles of fence they are able to energize, or maybe the number of acres of fence they are able to energize. But perhaps a more important number is the number of joules that an energizer has. Generally speaking, the higher the number of joules, the more powerful and effective the energizer is. For this project, I'm upgrading from a 9-joule charger to a 24-joule charger. So I will be using a Power Wizard fence energizer. And if you're looking for a good, reliable fence charger that is very reasonably priced, I would encourage you to look into Power Wizard's line of fence energizers. I first became acquainted with their products a few years ago when I was looking for a backup charger for my electric fence system. I was impressed with how affordable their products were and also what a long warranty they had. I ended up ordering this PW9000, and when I got it in, I was so impressed with its performance, I ended up using it as my primary fence charger rather than my backup fence charger. But as my fencing has expanded, I really need a more powerful fence charger, so I'm upgrading to their PW24000, which is supposed to be the largest fence charger made in the U.S. It has 24 joules. It's supposed to be able to power up to 400 miles of fence and it still has their three-year warranty, including lightning protection, and cost about half or even a third of what other name brand comparable chargers cost. So let's hook this up, see how it works. All right, so the upgrades are complete. Let's see if we have an improved fencing system. So before this upgrade, my fence was registering just under 4,000 volts. After the upgrade, I'm registering just under 8,000 volts. So I've doubled the voltage in my fence by this upgrade. I'm pretty happy with that. The fence ought to be more effective, pack more of a punch. 
In conclusion, let me just say this. Electric fencing can be a really good option on your farm. Whether you're running cattle or horses or sheep or goats or chickens or whatever, electric fencing has a product that allows you to be able to contain your animals and also keep predators away. As long as you have a really good fence charger, a really good grounding system, and well-maintained fences, you can find that electric fencing is very effective. Not only is it effective, it's affordable, and it's also very versatile. For that reason, I use a lot of electric fencing in my farm, and a lot of people do. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're within driving distance of Northwest Alabama, and maybe you're looking for goats and sheep, a starter herd or flock, give me a call, see what I have available at the time. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy farming.